Hey, good afternoon. So, for reasons I can't explain, YouTube would not let me upload the entire video um, that I had prepared about falling for HEMA. It only let me put up a few minutes. So, yesterday I posted a video about back falling, and here is the remainder of the video dealing with back rolls, forward rolls, and side falls. Thanks. I hope you enjoy. A back roll uh, can be very important to have in your repertoire, and I tend to teach this later. Um, the reason being is that very often people coming to class, this may be their very first martial art. Um, it may be that they've never wrestled or, or never used their body in a gymnastic manner. Uh, so because of that, I tend to save this for later on and have them work on the backfall where they are working on their flexibility in their back, being able to round it, being able to tuck their head effectively, um, and being able to maintain that position through the movement. All of that is the prerequisite for doing a back roll. And again, I would teach it beginning at the ground, choosing to go over one or the other shoulder, and then from a standing position. Beginning again from this crouched down position, knees inside the elbows. Um, you will cue your, your partners or your students or yourself to have a look at your toes, roll backwards, and then choose one of the other shoulder to roll over. So before I even go, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna roll over this shoulder. So I don't wanna go straight back onto my spine. I want to orient myself to my right shoulder. This will involve pushing off a little bit more um, with my left leg as I'm going backwards. So again, I'm gonna tuck, roll back, and over, okay? Let's see that again, same side, okay? I wanna go over this shoulder, so this leg has to push. Tuck, roll, and I go. Other side is the same manner, okay? This leg is gonna do more work because I'm gonna go over this shoulder. As before from a standing position, you're gonna begin standing, flow through the bottom position and roll. Okay, now that we have back falls and back rolls under control, let's have a look at a side fall. Now, side falls are really, really common. Um, nine times out of 10, when you get thrown in either a forward or a backward motion, um, there will be a certain rotational quality to the fall. And this will end up with you landing on one or the other side rather than straight back to your back. Now, I mean, let's be clear, straight back to your back absolutely happens um, and you need to train it, but the side fall is really, really what you need. So here we go. With the side fall, unlike the back fall, I actually have people begin on the ground. So if I'm going to fall onto my right side, I am going to want to land in a position, again for practice, something like this, okay? My right leg, the entire length of it, is on the ground, um, the full side of it. And when I get thrown, it will often hit the ground, something like that, okay? My left leg is going to be up. Part of the reason for training this position is so that you get used to maintaining a certain amount of tension in the groin so that when you are thrown, your leg does not slam down, either jamming your knees together, which is extremely painful, 
or if you carry your genitals on the outside of your body, you don't exactly want to be smashing them there. So for either of those reasons, keeping your leg upwards is a better choice. Now, <clears throat> again, we're going to have that beat of the hand. The hand, I, I have my arm out at the same angle as my leg. Okay, it doesn't exactly have to be, again, but this is helping you practice splaying out in the fall to arrest the rotational quality of the throat. So if you want to practice getting into this position, you can begin on your back here, tucked up. This again helps you practice the strength needed to fall safely, tucked up, and fall out to the side. Tuck up, fall. Okay? And you can make that as explosive as you want as you get comfortable with it. This can be a very nice ab workout for yourself or your students. And again, you're going to notice this whole time I'm keeping my head tucked up and my eyes oriented towards my upper knee. Okay? So this is again. The cue of what to look at as you're falling is right here, okay? My top hand can do anything it wants to do. Usually it's being held, okay, by the person throwing me. So for the falling practice, it just stays loose and natural. Up and fall. Okay? Other side, same thing, just everything is 180. So here we are. Here's our position. Tuck up and fall. Okay, now that we're feeling comfortable with that position on the ground and we can get there without much thought, we can now practice getting to where we're going to fall there from a standing position. Much like the back squat or the back fall, we're going to begin in this crouched position. If I'm going to fall, onto my right hip, I am going to put my right foot across here. Again, some people this may be uh, effortful for them to get into this position. That's okay, it's all about the practice. So, right foot comes across, right arm comes up, and I fall, okay? Again, from the squat, This gives a little bit more of a jar to the neck, so it lets you practice that, okay? Left leg across, fall. Okay. Just like with the back fall, now we can progress from standing, and we will do this basically as a one-legged squat. Okay, so now we are ready for a forward roll, okay? Um, so to do a forward roll, we're going to begin just like the back and side falls, where we are going to start on the ground and work our way to standing, um, and eventually, if, if you feel so compelled, to flying through the air. Okay, so here we go with the forward roll. Again, this crouch is where we're going to start. So. We get nice and comfy here. Our first step is going to be to take one hand, one or the other, it doesn't matter, we'll work both sides, and place it between your legs and facing behind you, okay? So you're going to come from both arms outside to one inside and close to your foot if you can get it there. Now, as you see, this pulls my shoulder down and I have a tendency to want to look behind me. That's what we want to do, okay? So, boom, okay? Now, once you are feeling comfortable being able to do that, to finish the roll, all you have to do is go over this shoulder. So, here, 
and out. Now, it's very common when you're first learning to do this to be scared to push off. So you will barrel roll sideways. This isn't our goal. Let me show you a barrel roll so that you know what it looks like. But that's not what we want to do. Okay. So as you see, I rolled sideways. Um, and again, this is very, very common um, that people will barrel roll rather than somersault. All right. <clears throat> what we're looking for is enough of a push off with your legs that you're going to go heels overhead. I land in the same position as the side fall. This is going to be a very safe and comfortable position for you to land. Other side. So once you have incorporated that into your practice and you're feeling comfortable with it, you can begin to flow from a standing position. Unlike the back fall, we aren't going to flow through the squat here. Rather, we're going to take a one side leading leg and go here and this is going to put our body in a similar position to where we were here. Okay? Just higher. You'll notice when I do this, again, I'm going to commit one foot or the other. Okay? The forward leg is the forward arm, and I'm going to point my hand backwards so that I'm making this rounded shape with my arm, okay? I don't want to put it down this way. This is how we break elbows, this way. Other side. I'm gonna commit my other foot, turn that hand around, look behind me. One more time. So in that case, no hands are going to touch. Popper? Popper.